Good morning, everyone. Welcome to another edition of From the Press Box. Here every Monday, 9 a.m. to 10 a.m. And later on, this becomes a podcast on anywhere you find podcasts. Odyssey is the latest one for WHPC, but we're also on Spotify. We're on um, iHeartRadio app, at nccradio.org, Spreaker, all of them. So this does become a podcast later on, but we are live every Monday, 9 a.m. to 10 a.m. And we've been doing this remotely now for, let's say, Thursday, Long time. Long 15 time, months, 15 months, 14 months, something like that. Long time. Anyway, my name is Rob Leonard, and joining me, of course, is my brother and award-winning sports writer, Tim Leonard. Hello, brother. How are you? Greetings, brother. I am uh, outstanding this morning. Just want to just want to confirm, brother. Odyssey. That's A U D A C Y. Correct. Yes. Yes. All right, just want to make sure. Well, the reason I you you say that is because I typed it on uh, Facebook and it came out as Audacity. No, the reason so. I the reason I said that is I want people to know how to spell it. <laughs> uh, okay. Well, yes. So 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 when if and when they're looking for us, or I should say when they're looking for us, not if. Uh, of course. They know where they know where to go. I, I like I like the good. listeners to be informed. That's uh, part of the service I provide. Okay, um, I thought we start out. We always start out with the Yankees and Mets. Let's start out with a uh, something that's beyond the game. I think a little bit, brother. And we're going to talk about the NFL is starting to put uh, their lead foot down on everyone, um, or heavy foot, maybe. Maybe it's a better term. Uh, they have mandated that. Oh, no, 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 no. Wait, brother. Wait. They, they haven't mandated. They haven't mandated. Let's, let's, what have they done? Get to the updated email. Uh, basically, the NFL, what they're doing uh, is they are strongly uh, recommending that their players get vaccinated uh, to the extent that they could, if, if, uh, if, if games have to be postponed, that the NFL is telling teams that there could be forfeits involved instead of the the insane way that they tried to reschedule games last year. If you remember last season, uh, I, I think the Pittsburgh Steelers were probably uh, that them and uh, I believe the Houston Texans were the two uh, the two most uh, egregious uh, uh, culprits here. Uh, but they had to reschedule games. There was a, one game played on a Wednesday, which I, I think was probably the first Wednesday game in NFL history. Um, but the league, the league basically did anything and everything it could to make sure that all of the games got played. Uh, right, now, right. the problem with that is if you play an NFL game on a Wednesday, that means you have three days, basically, to get ready for, a, for your next game. And one of those days, which is the day after a game, players can't do anything. Bro. I don't know if people realize just how physical the NFL is, but if, if, you, if you go look up uh, stories from, from former NFL players – they will tell you the day after a game, they can't get out of bed. That's how much their bodies hurt. So you can't practice for your next game if you can't even get out of bed. Well, that, that's true. Um, but they do have games sometimes, you know, a Sunday game and then a Thursday game, brother. Right, you which, know, I, because... which I hate. And if, and if you'll notice, brother, I hate to cut you off. But if you'll notice, those Thursday games tend to be some of the worst games of the season because the teams don't have enough enough time to prepare for the games. So the Thursday games and, and, and every, I, I don't know of any NFL fan who will, di- who would disagree with, but those Thursday games tend to be some of the worst games of the season. Yes, uh, I agree. So we'll see what happens with this brother. This is a major thing because it's the league, you know, they, you know, they, they're, they're sort of holding, um, holding mo- monetary things. You have to forfeit a game. Obviously you, You'd lose some money, and and the players, personally, you know what? I I guess you couldn't do it with the union thing, but I would say if a person didn't, you know, get his COVID shot, you might have the right to get rid of him because look what's look what it's going to be a hundred percent in the stadiums this year. MetLife Stadium basically is, you know, we want to fill this thing up, of course, and and we will, and we have to sell our beer and pretzels and hot dogs and everything else, so. Um, nachos, I wouldn't, be, bro, nachos. I wouldn't be surprised if the NFL said, Hey, if you don't do it, you know, maybe you could, you can sit out until you do. You know, I, 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 I don't, I don't know what, what the fan mandate is going to be. Cause, cause clearly they can mandate fan behavior because there's no, there's no 
there's no uh, contract with a players association that, that, that the NFL has with the fans. Um, right. But, right. but here, here's, here's some of the facts for, for what's going on here, brother. Um, first of all, uh, this is this is all coming from uh, NFL Commissioner Roger Goodell. Uh, he said he says that more than seventy five percent of NFL players are at least partially vaccinated. So that that means they have at least one shot. Um, more than half of the league's teams have player vaccination rates above eighty percent. So uh, that that all of that is good stuff. Sixteen NFL teams have hit vaccination rates of eighty five percent or or higher. And that, that's according to ESPN's Jeremy Fowler. So that, I mean, that in itself is good, but let's also remember that the Yankees who, who still currently are dealing with, with COVID uh, injury list people, Aaron judge among them had six players go out. The Yankees are, are more, more than 85% vaccinated. So it's not a guarantee that right. nobody on your team is going to get COVID. Let, let, let me, let me, Re, restate this for people who don't seem to understand. Getting a vaccine for COVID does not mean you won't get COVID. But what it does mean is that you are extremely unlikely to have to be hospitalized or die. So basically right. the vaccine is a life-saving measure. It doesn't mean that you won't get COVID. So let, let's let's get that fact out there for the for the idiots who still don't understand and, and apparently seem to not want to understand. Now, all that being said, um, unvaccinated players will have to will will require daily testing and mask wearing, and will have restrictions placed on their travel. So, and th- this is in a memo that Goodell sent to the NFL teams from last week. Um, this it, it, it comes back to stuff that happened last year. The NFL had to postpone five games. They had to move ten games to accommodate um, COVID outbreaks. But if all of that if if all that stuff happens again, uh, they're saying that a forfeit will be called this season if if all of these circumstances occur. And and the first one of those if, is if a game is postponed by requirement of, of government authorities or medical experts or at the discretion of the commissioner because right. of ongoing health concerns. And, and, that, and that lends itself to you know, the outbreaks that we're seeing currently. Uh, right now, Florida has 20% of the COVID cases in, in the entire country because the idiots down there have no clue what they're doing. Um, Texas is also a state that is seeing a, a major surge in COVID cases. And, and Missouri is another, another uh, state that is having massive. All of those states have NFL teams. Right, right. So... Here we are, and 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 if, if they can't get a handle on it, if the states aren't going to do their jobs, then we're going to have an issue. And, and Goodell is is planning for something along those lines so that the NFL doesn't have to jump through hoops like they did last year. Um, so then uh, the second uh, circumstance would be if the league can't find a suitable date to reschedule the game within the 18 week framework of the regular season. And the third is if the original postponement was caused by an outbreak among unvaccinated players of one team. Right. If all right. three of those things happen, and, and I believe me, I think that last one is probably going to take priority because I think if Goodell hears that the outbreak was started because player A wasn't vaccinated, I think he's going to say, you know what? Screw off. I- I'm done with this. I, you, you, you had your chances. I'm not tolerating this anymore. You're for- you forfeit. And, and I and I think that that the pressure that will come from that is all of the vaccinated teammates who will wind up losing a game check because one of their ignorant teammates decided not to get vaccinated. Well, that's that's what I was going to ask, reason. brother. Yeah, you know, it, you know, if, if the game is canceled, the forfeited doesn't get played. Do the players still get paid? No, you know, so. they lose a game check, brother. And for a lot of guys, that's a significant amount of money. Yeah, well, that would be a lot of money. You know, it's you know one out of eighteen, so exactly, or one out and, of seventeen. I should you know, say. And, I, and I'm not, I'm not going to I'm not going to sit here and say that every NFL player is making ten million dollars a year because obviously they're not. But you know, the NFL minimum salary is somewhere in the neighborhood of what five hundred, six hundred thousand. So you know, divide that by eighteen. It's still a significant amount of money. Oh yeah, yeah, and, and especially those guys who make that money, they're not they're not guaranteed to be in the league more than more than this season. So they're they're making those those guys who are 
you know, the, the, the 47th guy on the roster, they're, they're making life changing money and it might, they might only make it for one year. Right. Right. So if you have, if if you have to throw away, you know, $60,000 because one of your teammates is an idiot, Believe me, some, there's, there's going to be some conversations that are going to be had, and they're not going to be nice conversations. Conversations is a good word, brother. Mm-hmm. It's a very good word. So I wonder if any other league will do this. Um, you know, you know. I assume the NHL and the NBA are going to be full full game of uh, – full thing of well, – what's worse? Full, full game seasons, I guess. Full seasons. Well, yeah, they, I, I'm, I'm assuming for, for next season that, that the NHL and NBA will, will be starting up in, in usual, you know, October or whatever and, and, and going through a full season. I, I'm sure that's the expectation at this point, for sure. Right. Um, I, that doesn't necessarily mean it will be the case, but, you know, the fact that we have a, a decent number of, of the population vaccinated and believe me it's not nearly as high as people think it is but it's still a significant portion of of the, of the country uh, but you know there's still a, a also a significant part, portion of the country that says no way am i getting vaccinated which i will never understand in my life i don't either but you know there's a uh, there's a lot of reasons none of them good but i know some friends of mine Tim, who, who who are not getting it i, I don't know, know why they, they i'm sure they don't have a reason that makes sense no, it doesn't, but they think it makes sense. That's the problem. That's, that's also, bigger. brothers, you know, you just we were just talking about schedules. Uh, just quickly on a side thing, the Islanders uh, and the NHL, they, they released their schedules last week. How about that? And the Islanders aren't going to play until the middle of November. It's going to be a Saturday game. I forgot who they're playing. Do you mean, do you um, mean at home or do you mean overall? At home, at home. Oh yeah, no, that was to be expected, brother. That's because they're yeah, because they're the giving arena. they're giving them the extra time uh, to make sure that the that the the new arena gets finished. Yeah, so um, you know they're going to play you know basically a month on the road. Yeah, so well, yeah, pretty much close to it anyway. Yeah, so um, I, I was shocked by that, but uh, I was I was hoping for like one more game at the Coliseum. Like, okay, we can't get the UBS Arena are open yet, and let's let's do two more at the Coliseum. You know, but I mean, I, I suppose I it's possible, but it, it's unlike nah. that. I know that the league doesn't want to do that, and and I'm sure the I'm sure the team doesn't want to do that because if they do, then then you then you all you do is see the stories about well, what a failure this is, and why couldn't they get it done, and and you know you, you see a lot of negative stories, and, well, they're, and they're up they're up to the seats now, so it's basically done. Right, yeah. it, it's it's something that will get done, um, but like I said, it, it, it's it's a cir- it's a, it's a circumstance where, um, you know, it, it it arenas sometimes will take a little extra time. We talked about this a couple of weeks ago. I, I mentioned Tottenham Hotspur's uh, 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 stadium when when they opened, and and they they had issues with with fire alarms. And, right. and, and stuff wasn't working. There was a, you know, there, there's a short somewhere. And if it doesn't work, if it doesn't work, you can't open the building if you don't have the completely working right. fire alarm. Right, right. So all of that stuff needs to be, you know, the, the, the I's need to be dotted. The T's need to be crossed as the saying goes. Um, but that, that's all stuff that you, you leave that extra time for. And, and let's make sure everything works. And let's run, you know, do some run throughs and tests and everything else. And then we can we can open the building with confidence. We know the fans will all be safe. We know the building is ready to go. And and you know that that's that's what that's about. So you know, it, it, no, it's not good that the Islanders are starting off with with a month on the road. Basically, um, you know, obviously they they played far better at home this season uh, that that just concluded. Well, you so, know, the good the good part is, brother, is that they finished yeah. the season at home. A lot. Yeah, I mean, yeah, so. they'll, they'll. I mean, that's the good part. If if they can, if they can play well in that first month, and and by I'm I'm not even saying like you know first place or anything. I, I'm not I'm not expecting that. When you play a month of games on the road, chances are you're probably going to be around 500. Now, you know, if the Islanders can play, let's let's say they play I don't know 12 games in that first month. So if if that's the case, if they can come out of there with uh, let's see maybe like seven and five. I mean, eight and four. I think is asking a little too much. But, you know, somewhere right. around 14, 15 points, somewhere in that range, I think that would be great. 
I'd be I'd be happy with that because now you're going to be talking about the rest of the season being you know home game after home game. Right, right. No, it's understandable. And one more thing with the Islanders, since we're on them, um, Rick uh, Rick Eberle. No, Jordan Eberle, brother. Oh, I'm thinking of Rick Eberle, the guy who hosts the show here at WHPC. There you uh, go. Good plug. Good plug, brother. Uh, uh, anyway, uh, he is now a Seattle Kraken. Yes, unless, unless Rick Eberle is on the, on the Kraken, too. I don't know. He might be. You know, he, he, he's you know, supposedly good at hockey. I don't know. <laughs> he, he's a good. He's a good host. He's a good host. Anyway, the Kraken picked him, and uh, you know I, we're gonna miss him. The Islanders are gonna miss him. Um, I don't like this name Kraken. The more I think about it, it's gonna everyone's not, gonna start right? calling. They're gonna start calling the Crackers. No, well, yes. I, only, I, have, I haven't heard that from anybody except you right now. I'm starting a new trend. So let's so, let's not do that. Why not? It, it's because it's ridiculous. <laughs> the Kraken. What type of stupid name is that? Oh, uh, it, it's, it's it's a it's a um, it, it's it's a it's a, a sea creature. It's like a big. It's like a giant octopus. Oh, okay. So there's a reason. It, it, it's actually not a bad name, brother. That's like uh, El Gary for the Yankees. They call him the Kraken. I'm sure they do, brother. I'm sure they do. And um, he'll probably anyway, he'll probably be an honorary member of the team. That could be. Now, let's talk about the Yankees, brother. What happened last night? You know, it, they lost to the Sox, and, uh, but they blew, they blew this game. They did. You're not going to get an argument from me, brother. D- Domingo Herman. Good pronunciation, has a no- brother. What? Good pronunciation. Very Thank nice. Thank you. He has a no-hitter, right? Through seven. Through seven. Pitch, pitching brilliant. Ten strikeouts, dominating the Red Sox. So he, he starts the eighth, lets gives up a hit. Aaron Boone said, Well, that's it. Gives up a double. Yeah, this is yeah, I, I knew once once I once I was watching this game yesterday, I knew this game was gonna be right up your alley, brother. I because there's so many so many things so many things that happen in this game that you hate. <laughs> you know, uh, what what would Rob Leonard allow him to do? He allowed him to keep pitching. That's exactly until, right. Until until he proved he was he lost it. One hit in the eighth inning doesn't mean he's lost his pitching. And well, now, I, I'm, go- I'm going to say this. First of all, I, I, I don't defend the moves that were made yesterday. I thought Aaron Boone had a terrible game managing, and, and, I, and, and it's, it's not even necessarily his fault. This is all the analytics, and, and this, this is not going to change if the Yankees fire Aaron Boone. They're just going to get another guy in there to be making the same decisions. So you, you can't say, well, Aaron Boone's a bum and he doesn't know what he's doing. And you know, we, we, you know, we, we, things would improve if Aaron Boone was fired. No, they wouldn't improve. It would, it would stay exactly the same. So to say that and get that out of the way, the, the move that was made should have worked. But that being what, said, taking it did him not. Out, taking taking, him John, out. Jonathan Loisega was the guy who was brought in to replace Domingo Herman. Loisaga has had a phenomenal season. He's been outstanding. Yesterday, he was garbage. So you know, that is the issue. You, you're bringing in a guy who has been reliable for you all season, but for whatever reason, he didn't. He didn't have it at all yesterday. Uh, Loisaga came in and and got pummeled. Uh, so you know, that becomes the issue. But the 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 addition of that is that I don't want to hear is that how do you give how do you give up a double? You know, Alex Verdugo leads off the eighth with a double, and immediately Herman gets the hook. It's it's the first hit he's given up, but then Loisaga comes in, and 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 th- this is what happened: Hunter Renfro double run scores, uh, Christian Vasquez single, Hunter Renfro scores, Franchi Cordero, what a name, uh, single. So now it's first and second. Kike Hernandez double, another run scores, Cordero to third. So then Zach Britton replaces Loisaga, who has not gotten a single out. Four guys batted, four guys hit the ball, and then Britton comes in. There, there's nobody out, and, and there are uh, men on second and third. So ground ball, run scores. That's the tying run. And then sacrifice fly, run scores. That's the go-ahead run. So you can't really fault um, Zach Britton for what he did. He got two outs. But when you got guys in second and third, the two outs are going to lead to two runs. 
So well, that is the issue. I don't. I, I would have. I would have at least given Domingo Herman one more bat. Hunter Renfro is a right-handed batter. I give. I give Her, Domingo Herman one more batter. It's righty on righty. Let him see. And if, and if and if and if Renfro gets a hit and he gets on base, <clears throat> even if he walks or whatever, fine. Bring in Luizaga. He's he's been your guy all season. But the quick hook there was what I thought was ridiculous, and and it, it was part of the reason it cost the Yankees a game. I agree. I mean, uh, you, you know the Rob Leonard law of, of pitching. Uh-huh. You let him pitch until the arm falls off. Yeah, well, you know, we, we've had this conversation before, brother. You don't but, care but, about hurting but, pitchers. But what bothers me, brother, is, you know, you have a no-hitter and you give up one hit, and all of a sudden it's like, it's over. Take care. Good night. Have a good night. You gave right. up one hit. Yeah, I know. That's what I said. But, <laughs> but what's... Why not let him continue? If he gives up a second hit, okay, maybe you take him out. Or maybe, you know, on the third hit or whatever. But on the first hit, you let him do a second or third try afterwards. Well, I'm trying to find, brother, and, I, and I'm, I'm not having success this far. I'm, I'm trying to find out how many pitches Herman threw yesterday, and I'm, I'm bouncing around the Internet trying to figure it out. Um, so, you know, that's, that's part of the issue. If Herman was over 100 pitches already, I, I could see why. Um, but you know, again, it, it, pitch counts are one thing. The eye test is another one. Right. So that's, you know, that's, that turns out to be the issue, uh, for me, you know, I, I don't care if he's throwing a hundred pitches. If, if, if the guy is dominating hitters, just because one guy finally gets a hit, you, you don't overreact. And to me, that's what happened yesterday. It was an overreaction. Um, but you know, this, it, this was, you know, this was a, a really, a, a tough game, and, and it, there were a lot of games like this. It seemed like it seemed like whoever whoever scored first uh, in 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 this series, and it was a four game series, and the Yankees wound up losing three out of four. But it seemed like whoever scored first lost the game because right. the Yank the Yankees had come back the day before. They scored four runs in the eighth, and they beat the Red Sox four to three. Uh, the Red Sox uh, on on um, on Friday had done the same thing. They rallied and came back, and the Yankees bullpen blew that game. So it was, it, there was, it, it was just a lot of bad results, and, and uh, I, I'm just, I'm not really thrilled with how the weekend went, especially with with the Yankees right now. I mean, they're basically playing for their season. They're 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 51 and 47 right now. The Red Sox are 61 and 39. The Red Sox are 22 games over 500. You know, I don't think the Yankees are going to catch the Red Sox. It's it's what they're nine games back. Uh, I'm not. I'm certainly not going to say now that they're not going to catch them because obviously we have 1978 to look back on and 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 say, all right, yeah, anything's possible. But at the same time, you know, who who's doing what and who's playing? How, how are they playing? And again, it comes back to the eye test. <clears throat> you know, I I look at this Yankee team and they don't seem to be able to get above maybe six games above 500. And and it seems like whenever they have a good run of play that's followed right. by a bad run of play. It, it's every, everything it seems to balance itself out. It's like, didn't Seinfeld do an episode about that? Like everything balances itself out. Yes. And, and everything that, evens out. Yeah. That's what's happening with the Yankees this season. Now the, the, the pivot from that is the schedule that the Yankees have coming up. And, and this is going to be really, this to me is season defining. Because they have they have a three game series with with Tampa that starts tomorrow, and obviously the Yankees, Tampa is one of the teams the Yankees are chasing. Um, then after that is is they stay in Florida for three games against the Marlins, uh, a terrible team. Three games against the Orioles, another terrible team. Uh, four games against the Mariners, who actually are playing better lately, but are not a very good team. Uh, and then three games on the road against the Royals. The, the three the games against the Orioles and the Mariners are a, a one week homestand. So Marlins, Orioles, Mariners, and Royals. If, if the Yankees don't fatten up in those thirteen games, and, and by fatten up, I mean going something in the neighborhood of eleven and two or ten and three. I mean they really need to win a lot of games and, and right. put together some kind of a winning streak, or you know, like I said, at least a, a at least a two week. Um, um, sustained effort of, of good baseball. If 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 they come out of this thirteen games at like seven and six, season's over. This is the time. The time is now for for the Yankees to make a move and and to really thrust themselves into into the playoff picture. Because if they're four games above five hundred now, 
by the time this this next two weeks is over, they better be like twelve games over five hundred. Because otherwise, they're not they're not doing anything this season. And you know, I I, I still don't know what's going to happen at the trade deadline. I still think the Yankees probably are going to wind up being buyers instead of sellers. Personally, I think it's a mistake, and I've said that for several weeks now. Although I still have no no real idea who they could trade and who would bring back you know right, really right. significant prospects in return because they don't have you know they they don't have the Araldus Chapman and Andrew Millers to trade. I mean, maybe they could trade Chad Green. You know, but he's not going to get back the same kind of return that an Araldus Chapman got from the Cubs or, or that Andrew Miller um, got from the Indians. So, you know, I, yes. I, I don't. It, 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 it's you know the Yankees right now. It, it's it's they're kind of betwixt in between. There's there's you know you don't have that one significant player who you know you could get a, a load of players for. You know, like like years ago when Cano was about to be a free agent. I was saying on this show, the Yankees should trade Cano and get three significant prospects for him. I remember that. And in, and instead, they played out the season, they missed the playoffs, and then Cano went and signed that ridiculous contract with Seattle Mariners. And, and so they, they, wound, up, they the wound up getting nothing. So, so, you know, I mean, they could have gotten significant prospects who would be helping the, the current team right now. So, you know, I mean... Who knows what's going to happen in the future? You know, Giancarlo Stanton can't be traded because of his contract. Nobody's going to take him on, and and, and he's he's he hasn't played the outfield in two years. So you, you, I don't even know if you could trade him to to a National League team, and I don't know if a National League team would want to take him on with his injury history and the the expectations that he would play the outfield. So right, right. You know, there there aren't a lot of guys that they have on on the current squad who you could say, oh yeah, he'd bring back a good prospect, except for Aaron Judge, and I. I, I highly doubt they're going to trade at Aaron Judge because he's the face of the franchise at this point. You know, he, he's, he's taken over for Derek Jeter as, you know, he is Mr. Yankee. So how do you trade that guy? You can't. That's, that, so that becomes the issue. Glaber Torres, if it was two years ago, Glaber Torres, I'd say, yeah, you could trade him for a boatload of, of, of prospects. But this year's Glaber Torres, is, 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 he's, he's a diminished player. I don't know what's going on with him, but he's still only 24, 25 years old. He's... He is a significantly diminished player. Nobody's going to give up a, a ton of prospects for him. Um, so that's that's where the Yankees are, and and they they need you know they need to to retool a bit. Um, they're still looking at uh, when when Luis Severino is coming back, when Corey Kluber is coming back. But really, for me, and I never thought I would say this, the problem is the offense. You know, you, we saw we saw what what the what the Triple A guys came up and and have done uh, since uh, since all the players would would judge and and Urshela and and were were two of the two of the six who went on the the the, the COVID injured list. Um, but you know, guys like Greg Allen and Ryan Lamar and 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 they they injected a, a, a very much needed dose of energy and enthusiasm and and speed and and have given the Yankees another way to score runs instead of waiting for for a home run. And, and it's it's been a lot of fun to watch and, until this weekend, of course. But you know, these I think some of these guys should should continue to have a role even when Judge and Urshela come back. So you know, we're we're gonna have to see where it goes. But I I just I, I I've been saying it for weeks, brother, and and I, I don't see good things uh, ahead for this Yankee team. I I I, I hope that they don't trade for Joey Gallo because he's going to cost a boatload of prospects. And all you're getting is you're getting a left-handed bat, which the Yankees certainly do need, but you're getting a ton of strikeouts and you, you're getting the same all or nothing approach that they have with, with a bunch of right-handed hitters already. They don't need, they don't need Joey Gallo. What they, what they, what they needed was Adam Frazier from the Pirates who just got traded yesterday to the Padres, which apparently is going to be announced today. But that he would have been, he's a left-handed bat. He, he leads the national league and hits a great get for the Padres, but that was the kind of player who would have been a great fit for the Yankees at the top of the order. So right. A guy who could get on base, run the bases, and 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 score runs. And and that's the kind of guy they need way more than than Joey Gallo swinging for the fences. All right, great, brother. Anyway, you're listening to 90.3 WHPC, the voice of Nassau Community College. This hour of from the press box is brought to you by everything and anything. Join Steve Mandracina every Friday 
6 p.m. to 8 p.m. as he tries to play everything and anything on 90.3 WHPC, streaming at nccradio.org, among other places. Now, let's look at the Mets, brother. Oh, by the way, I'm Rob Leonard. He's Tim Leonard. Good job. Anyway, uh, Mets are four games ahead. <laughs> it, it, it's just amazing. It really is. They're 5-5 five and five in the last 10 games. They, let's be honest, they could Although, be, wait could a minute, brother, wait, wait, back, back up for one second. I, I will what? give the Mets credit. Uh, they are 5-2 and two in their last seven. I'll give them that. But they're 5-5 five and five in the last ten. Yes, because so. that, that, that was after three consecutive losses to the Pirates. So, 5-2 and two in their last seven. And that includes, that includes back-to-back series wins over the Cincinnati Reds and the Toronto Blue Jays. And the Blue Jays are a good team. So right, that, you know right. what? You know what, brother? That's that. The series win over the Blue Jays. That's the Mets thanking the Yankees for beating the Phillies two in a row. I'm sure that was the reason. I'll take that. I'll take that. Th- I'll take that little thank you from the Mets. I'm sure they said, "Hey, let's do one for the Yankees." Exactly. Well, the Yankees beat uh, beat Philly two out of two in that series last week. If you can call it two games a series, but no, you can't. What do you What do you call a two game? You call it gathering? A no, brother. What? Gathering is way bigger than that. What do you call a two game series? Uh, two you game. Call it, you call it a series, brother. They're all series. I don't know. Two you games. Know, is one series. one game is not a series. Two games is a series. Two games seems less than well, a series. It, it is, but it's it's not three. So anyway, um, so the Mets are, are playing pretty well lately. I will we'll give we'll give them that. Uh, Pete Alonso seems to have uh, found his uh, his his swing. He, he's he's definitely hitting better. You know what? I'll tell you what. Pete Alonso and Juan Soto, I think, are the two players who clearly have benefited from the home run derby. And it's and it's it's usually the opposite. Players usually don't benefit from the home run derby, but Pete Alonso certainly has. He looks he looks way more confident at the plate since the home run derby, and his numbers uh, clearly are better. Juan Soto has absolutely from the, from the Washington Nationals has absolutely been on fire since the since the home run derby, right? Um, so you know it, it, it's it, it's good to see that that some players can actually benefit from it. Um, here, look, Pete Alonso in in, a, in his last uh, well since the All Star break, um, nine games, five home runs, ten RBIs. And is batting three sixty eight, and 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 actually those five home runs and ten RBIs is all all in the last six games. Wow, I but like the batting he's, he's average crushing the ball. I like crushing. the batting average part, brother. Yeah, I mean he's that's what I care about. Three seventy in his last six games with a nine twenty six slugging percentage, which is monstrous. So you know that is is great. Pete Alonso right now twenty two home runs. 59 RBIs and he's and he's now batting 265, which I don't know before the All Star break I think he was batting around 240. So he he obviously has what for whatever reason a home run derby. And then I was watching the Mets yesterday and I for, I forget which one it was. It might have been uh, it might have been Keith because they they started talking about Keith's career. Why does why does Hernandez always got to talk about his own career during during the game? I don't understand that because Met fans want to hear Keith talk. Not really. He's, he really sounds. He really sounds like every time he does a game, he's he's being bothered. Like, oh, well, geez, all right, I'll he, talk. He I'll talk to you. I'll, 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 I'll give you another half hour if I have to. That's that's what it sounds like when he's doing the game. Um, but Alonzo, his book, Tim. I should give you his book from nineteen. Yeah, give me his book. Give me his book with the with the knife block next week. Um, but with the what? With the knives. Remember the knives you said you were going to bring me? The knife block? Oh, that's uh, right. With the, the knife block, with the, yes. Yeah, with the steak knives, yes. We've got to get that done. Yes, yes. I, I just remember that. Hernandez was, was point. I'm pretty sure it was Keith, was pointing out that Pete Alonso's pitch recognition has gotten massively better in the last couple of weeks. And I think part of that is because of the home run derby. He, he was seeing pitch after pitch after pitch, and he was crushing – all of those, and granted, you know, whoever is pitching a joust guy in the home run derby isn't throwing ninety five at him. But one I mean, pitch recognition is is probably ninety percent of hitting. If you if you can if you can figure out or see see the ball and and know what's coming and know that it's going to be outside or or down the middle or whatever, then you know what to swing at, what not to swing at. And, right, and right. Again, that's 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 the majority of hitting. So Alonzo looks very comfortable at the plate right now. 
he, he's, he's crushing the ball. And when that happens, only good things are going to happen for the Mets because he really is one of, one of the major, uh, major drivers of that lineup, and especially with Lindor out for an extended period because of the oblique injury. You know, the, the Mets couldn't have asked for anything more from Pete Alonso right now. I mean, he's, he's helping carry this team at, at exactly the time when, when they need him to, to, to carry them. So, you know, that's, that's where the Mets are right now. Well, I, th- um, I think, you know, Pete Alonso drives this team, and he's a, a guy that, you know, and, and Conforto is the other guy I wish would – he's he's doing well, but it, like I said, he's he, his contract ends the season. You'd think he'd be working it harder. That's all. Well, I mean, it's not uh, about Unless this is all he has to give. It, it's not necessarily about working it harder, but, you know, I mean, he, he hasn't – you know, his, his last – uh, well, let's say let's just say since the All Star break, uh, you know, two twelve with three three home runs and five RBIs. I mean, he certainly isn't lighting the world on fire here. Well, um, no, not at all. So you know, and and two of those home runs came in one game against the Reds. So he, he's uh, he's actually in, in a in a pretty pretty pronounced slump right now. He's uh, I'm just counting him here real quick. Twelve, thirteen, sixteen. He's one for his last sixteen. So, ouch. Yeah, that's an ouch. Uh, you know, and the Mets had that crazy game last week, um, 15, 11 and 11 innings uh, they, that they beat the Reds. That was uh, a great game. Just, uh, I, I, I don't even know what, what was going on there. It was crazy. The red, the Reds bullpen is terrible. Um, which, which obviously helped the Mets, but yeah, I mean, I agree with what you're saying about Conforto and, and needing to, to figure it out soon, uh, both for the Mets sake and, and for, for the sake of his future earnings. Because you know he, he's batting 204 right now. 204 is not an average that's going to get you a, a big money free agent contract. So uh, you know I, if Michael Conforto wants to be uh, you know want, wants tens of millions of dollars thrown in his direction by by several teams, uh, then he needs to figure it out at the plate in, in a hurry. Yeah, I worry so, about that. I yeah, worry and, about and, that. And the other the other thing that that's being talked about with the Mets a lot these days, brother, is uh, is a possible trade for Chris Bryant. From the Cubs, so that would obviously help the lineup. I mean, I'll tell you what: the good thing about Chris Bryant, most people when they think Chris Bryant, they think, oh, you know, third baseman. Chris Bryant can play anywhere, and he, he's <laughs> played he's played like five different positions for the Cubs. Yes, yes, third base is his main position, but he plays left field, he plays right field. He'll, he'll I mean, he'll play anywhere, and and you can you can put him in in several positions. So that would help Luis Rojas, the Mets manager. Uh, especially after Lindor comes back. Um, but, he, I mean, if he wants to run him out in the outfield, he can do that. And the other thing is that if the Mets make that trade and, and eventually sign, re-sign Chris Bryant, they wanted to sign him to, to an extension, then we go back to, you know, hey, if, if, the, if the National League ever, ever you know, grows a brain and decides, yeah, we are going to use the DH from now on. No, no. Yes, no. yes. It's not real baseball. Yes, it's not real but if they man. if they do that, then Chris Bryant would be a really great guy to have around because you know you'd you'd have another really good bat already there. So you know, think about that, brother. The Mets, the Mets right now they're built. First of all, Pete Alonso should be a DH. He's not he's not a very good defensive player. You could put Dom Smith at first base. You could put Chris Bryant at third, or you could put him in left. There's there's a, there's a lot of ways the Mets could go, but Pete Alonso would be a perfect designated hitter. I agree. So, you know, the Mets. So we don't fans, like, I don't fans, like the DH. Mets fans should be Mets fans should be rooting for the DH. Yeah. Anyway, um, there's a new team name in the American League, uh, the Cleveland Guardians. A lot it. of people, a lot of people like you, brother, hate it. I th- actually think when I found out what Guardians stood for, um, and it almost looks like Indians. If you cover the, the beginning four letters, uh, I wasn't that bothered by it. I think uh, it's always tough to name, uh, a, give a team that's so well established with their name, a new name. It's like if you had to t- uh, t- change the Yankees to, you know, the New York. Uh, why, why, would you change, why would you change perfection, brother? I don't know. But I'm just, what I'm saying is, is that, um, you know, it, it it's a little different, you know. It's it's tough to change. That's why Washington hasn't changed their name yet. And and who knows? They they might not change their name. The Washington football team actually sounds decent. 
Well, you know, the- I'll, I'll, t- I'll tell you my my opinion of the Washington football team. First of all, it, it sounded cool when it came out, and, and a lot of like uh, the hipster crowd was like, oh, yeah, hey, Washington football team, that's cool. I'm getting behind that. I, th- I think what's going on there is they're going to let that whole scenario kind of kind of play itself out and kind of milk it for all they can for, right. for being like the cool kid with, oh, we don't have a name. We're just football team. And I wouldn't be surprised if they give that another year just to sell merchandise and then, and then get a name. I, I think the name, I think the name comes after that because I think that that's, that's where, where they, they will go with it and say, you know, yeah, football team. Football team has become popular. I don't know where they are in terms of merchandise and how much they're selling, but it wouldn't surprise me if Washington football team is actually doing at least as well, if not better, than Washington Redskins did. Right. So, right. You know, from that standpoint, I certainly, I certainly could see it. Um, you know, like I said, sticking around for for at least another year. Uh, I, I I think that you know. I, I don't know that they'll necessarily go with another name before, say, 2023. Um, but but I well, let me just point out. I got this. I'm I'm going to give uh, give the credit where it's due uh, to uh, cousin cousin Jeff, who uh, posted this article from Cleveland Magazine on my Facebook timeline. Uh, right. But apparently, Guardians uh, is, is uh, something uh, that has to do with traffic of all things. Right? Who knew they even had traffic in Cleveland? Are they kidding? Can well, I, it, I, it, the, the name is specific to Cleveland. So, yes. you know, the, I understand that. That's why I wasn't that angry with it. You know, I thought of Guardians of the Century or Guardians of this movie called Guardians or something. Of the Guardians Galaxy. of the Galaxy, it, brother. Yeah, yeah Guardians Guardians of the Galaxy. Galaxy. But that, that, which was another reason why I didn't like it. But, but it, 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 it goes back to this, this uh, article in Cleveland Magazine, um, and I don't see any author for it. Um, but it says that uh, there are uh, sculptures on uh, the Lorraine Carnegie Bridge in Cleveland. Or, or, or sorry, it's now called the Hope Memorial Bridge. My bad. It used to be called the Lorraine Carnegie Bridge. Um, but they are Art Deco monuments that have been carved into the sandstone pylons of the bridge that have stood guard over east-west traffic since 1932. So that's basically where cars were invented. Um the name the name comes from the the bridge's engineer Wilbur Watson, um, who said that the eight figures were meant to quote typify the spirit of progress in transportation, and and each one of these guardians holds a different vehicle in his hand, representing the history of ground transport. So this obviously this is a big deal in Cleveland, and and it means something more to people in that area than it necessarily would mean to somebody like me who has no idea about the history. Uh, involved here now. Now, personally, I would have liked it if they would have gone back to the name Spiders because the, the Cleveland franchise, way back in the day, we're talking like 1900, right, 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 uh, right. was known as the Cleveland Spiders. Well, I, I who think names that been, their kids? Who names their thing Spiders? Come on, everyone hates Spiders. Well, you know what? Everybody hates. Everybody would hate playing against Spiders. So that's that's a way oh. to go. I mean, Guardians, I'm sorry. It sounds like an XFL team to me. I, 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 that's, that was my first um, response. Yeah. Because the there was an XFL team named Guardians. Wasn't that the New York team? You would know better than me. I have no idea, but I think it was. I'm pretty sure. No, it, was. it wasn't the Guardians, was it? I'm pretty sure it was. Keep, I don't know. Keep, what were you going to say, brother? I'll go look. Well, I was going to say that um, if you were going to name a team, if, if you're going to base a name of the team the way the Cleveland Guardians have come, there used to be eagles at Penn, Penn Station, you know, that were supposed to like wrap around the, the, you know, the station before they, you know, put the garden over it. And you can name your team like the New York team, the New York Eagles, you know, and then say, well, we're basing it on the yeah, Eagles. You couldn't that do that. To- you couldn't do that now because it's now you got Philadelphia Eagles. So, you know, uh, yeah, you know, New York, New York Guardians in the X- XFL in twenty twenty. That's it. Terrible. So, but yeah, but you, you couldn't you couldn't name a team in New York the Eagles just because a uh, hundred miles away there's already an Eagles. Very established. Is there is there trademarks in that type of thing? Um, probably not, but I'm sure I'm sure the Philadelphia Eagles would be really mad. Well, you know, I mean, if if you can, if you know, you could just probably, say Eagles. there probably is there probably is trademarks, but I mean, you know, there are some teams that have the same names. You know, obviously right. that's the case, um, but you you try not to do that. 
You know what I mean? Would would you really want New York Eagles when you have Philadelphia Eagles? Has been such a long and established tradition. I mean, you you you're going to get swallowed up. You know, I mean, it, you know, it, especially nowadays, if you do a, an internet search, I mean, the first hundred responses would be Philadelphia Eagles if you named it New York Eagles. So you you just got lost in the shuffle there. Um, so from that from that aspect, I, I certainly wouldn't name a, a, a New York team Eagles, but right. You know, you find a way to, to get around it and find a way to do it. And well, one thing that bothers me is about some of the minor league teams, I, like, I love when they use, like, the Iron Heads or something. You know, iron the, Pigs. Or the Iron Pigs or Iron something. And it's like, where did this come from? You know, Iron. But that's, that's, that's all – I mean, that kind of goes back to what you were just saying. It, it's all it's – all, uh, uh, um, the aspiration is to be unique. And, and there's only so many teams that you can call Tigers, uh, you know, or, 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 you know, whatever, whatever, um, you know, animal, aggressive animal that you want to use. That there's only so many of those around. Well, yeah, that's true. I mean, so you can be, you can be the frogs or something or. Yeah, but, you know, it's, the frogs isn't intimidating. That's why there's no teams named giraffes, brother. Giraffe is not an intimidating animal. Well, you, if he was chasing you, you'd be intimidated. No, they, I wouldn't. I'd just grab a leaf and, and put it above my head, and a giraffe would lean down and eat it. I mean, it's it's not an intimidating animal. Well, I, I don't know why. I don't know. I don't know why there's not not any any teams named sharks except for San Jose and the hockey. But you know, you would. Well, think it was Jacksonville Sharks and uh, one of the uh, well, it was the World Football League, and then some uh, AFL type league. Took there was the sharks. The, the sharks. sharks were in that uh, that movie with uh, what was the movie with Al Pacino as the coach. Oh, uh, Amy Fox and, played the quarterback. What was that? Uh, Terrible movie. Any given Sunday. Any given Sunday. Actually, Miss Suplee liked that movie, so I got to give I got to give the movie props, even though I didn't like it. It's Miss, a good movie. Miss, Miss Suplee, former uh, Albany Firebirds lineman in University of Maryland uh, Center. So uh, I I actually liked it because I thought it was uh, it. I just didn't believe Pacino as a coach. I I, just, I, believe I, I, I thought that coach. was one of the worst roles he ever had. I I my my problem was uh, Cameron Diaz as like the well yeah that too. Owner were, or whatever. She there was. were there were some stretches in that movie that were just, but but you know, Mr. Plee told me that that the the player stuff, the interaction, that he said that was that was good. He's not as not as good as North Dallas Forty, which is the greatest football movie ever made. But yes, it is. It was it was good. So anyway, that is that is. It's all about protecting the quarterback. That's what it's all about. Yeah. Anyway, brother. Uh, speaking of uh, teams, um, it's been announced that Staten Island. The uh, old ballpark that housed the Staten Island Yankees. There's going to be a new team there in the Atlantic League. So there'll be nine teams in the Atlantic League, which includes the Long Island Ducks. The Staten Island team is uh, part of a whole group of people. Uh, two uh, the owners are the Katz Matias people. Um, they own WABC, uh, and but there's a lot of other people as part of that. They've not said what they're going to name their team yet. Uh, I, I still never liked when it was the Staten Island Yankees. I always thought they should have been called the Staten Island Highlanders. Well, you know, the, I, I could go with that. Know, something like that, but... Um, well, you know, not the, to the, history. Yeah, and the, the stadium was, you know, it hasn't been used in two years, and uh, they have not taken care of any of it. <laughs> it's you know, shuttered, it, there's a shuttered is the word that I'm seeing uh, in in the reports here, brother. The shuttered yeah, they had stadium. Staten Island, uh, the Staten Island Advance sent a camera guy there, or some guy was there with his, I guess, his cell phone, and he took pictures, and it looked like like a, a like a park that you know that hadn't been cut in, in months. Yeah. And I think they're yeah. going to change it to a uh, different turf that that phony turf that you like. Uh, what field turf? Yeah. I hope not. Grass is the way to go for baseball. Yeah, the field but turf is is not the way to go. And I, I unless, they're, unless they're going, I mean, there there is. I'm I'm looking at a story here that says uh, that the city has pledged five million dollars to upgrade the stadium. Yeah, now, if that's the case. Field turf is going to eat up a million and a half of that. So I hope that they decide to to keep it grass. And oh, I mean, let's face it. You during the off season, you just need one or two guys to to maintain a field. I mean, if it, right. depending on what's happening on it, all you got to do is cut the grass and then you know throw down some fertilizer. It's not it's not a full time job to to maintain something. I mean, yeah, it's a big piece of land, but all you got to do is cut it. So yeah, you know, so depending on how much is being used. Uh, but yeah, the um, 
we got a group of local investors uh, with uh, your boy Katsimatidis, Titus, Katsimatidis, right? Katsimatidis, yeah. And uh, Merrill Lynch alum Danny Garcia. So who knows? But, uh, but uh, de Blasio yeah. was very, uh, Mary de Blasio very happy uh, when he proclaimed that baseball is back on Staten Island. Well, you know, the stadium was is only, it's not even 20 years old. It's not an old ballpark. It's a nice place, too. Nice place to see a game. I, I went to a couple of games there. I remember covering uh, El Duque in uh, in, a, in a rehab start over there. And you have that great view of the, the of Manhattan. It's just it's, beautiful. You're looking looking right out center field, you got you got the view of Manhattan. Just uh, you know, just like you can see the ocean from uh, from the Coney Island Park that uh, the Brooklyn Cyclones play. Right. It's a beautiful thing. A couple of things. The Olympics have started. Um, you know, it's it's. You know, everyone keeps saying, and the ratings are down, but it's like, well, it doesn't feel like it started. But, you know, a couple of games started before the ceremonies, yes. which they do every year or every Olympics because every that's Olympics. the way they do it. It's sort of a build up to it. And the ceremonies were very, you know, pretty cool. There was no kneeling. There was no anything like that. It was just, you know, a nice, nice thing, which is what's supposed to be a nice celebration. Um, Katie Ledecky has a uh, you know she she's been favored to win and she uh, she lost her first uh, well, well I mean I don't want to, not yeah, yes. match yeah well, swim you know, swim it's swim her first race brother race. Uh, we'll yeah, call yes she, she had been she had been favored to win certainly but um, the woman who beat her uh, is an Australian named uh, Ariane T- Titmus. Uh, who is looked at as as Ledecky's equal? I mean, she. This was the matchup that everybody wanted to see, um, and and uh, I, I, I assume that we'll see again in the Olympics at some point. Um, but this is is the woman who who is regarded as as Ledecky's equal, and and Katie Ledecky, you know, until until recently, hasn't had any equals. So um, you know the the, the race uh, wound up. Uh, Titmus actually had to come from behind. Uh, and won the race in 356-69, which is the second fastest time in the 400 freestyle ever in the event. Right. Uh, now, Ledecky finished in 357-36, which is the fourth fastest. You, you would think the fourth fastest time ever in the event would win a gold medal, but, you know, no, it didn't. Uh, and just to, just to give you some, uh, some balance uh, or some perspective, uh, the third-place finisher finished in 401 eight. So that's like three and a half seconds behind, which in swimming is, is an enormous gap. So, you know, I mean, Ledecky, she's favored to win gold in, in the 800 and the 1500. You know, the longer distances are, are really her bread and butter. Um, but certainly was, was, you know, could, we could say that she was expected to win gold. Uh, and this is a bit of a surprise. But, you know, Titmus is showing that she is obviously uh, someone to look uh, to, to be looking at now and, and in the future. Uh, because I'm, I'm, I have to assume that this will be Ledecky's last Olympics. Right. So, we should say that she is John Ledecky, Islanders co-owner, niece. Yes. So, so it's uh, for those who might say Ledecky, I know that name. Yeah. Well, yeah, that's where you niece. know it. And and since family can't go to, you know, see any of the the games, you know, I'm sure he's watching at home. So, uh, just oh, like sure. Bruce, just like Bruce uh, Springsteen and Patty Scalfia. You know, they couldn't go watch their je- uh, daughter, Jessica, uh, do the equestrian stuff. Yeah, so. Bruce, Bruce should have told him he'd sing something, and they would have let him in. Well, you know, he could have. He could have been part of the show, and then, then he could have gone. You're right. Yeah. And we should There's say no one, thing, one thing about the Olympics, brother. <laughs> it, it does take a couple of days to get into it. Uh, I think, you know, NBC knows what they're doing. They've been doing this for 100 years. Uh, I really think that in the next two or three days and, you know, basketball is going to be going. And, you know, once the Olymp- uh, once the, the gymnastics starts, that's when, that's what everyone starts to watch. And the gymnastics is already going on, brother. We, we, yeah, uh, I know, but, know. but you know what I mean? I, I was I mean. watching, so I was watching some small Biles yesterday. I know, but you know what I mean about how it, it just, well, we th- said this, a, we said this last week. I know, but we said this last week. I I'm, I'm not. I'm not feeling the excitement because the, the buildings don't have the excitement. There aren't, you know, Katie Ledecky and 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 this this Australian woman were, were coming down the wire and, and like battling it out, and and the, the arena is silent. 
There's, there's well, no, there's you, no you know what got me, brother. And cheering. I, I need that from that. That's what's telling me that, that everybody in the building is invested in what's going on. And when you hear well, silence, well, you know, it's, it's hard to get excited. Uh, the Olympic Committee, obviously, I, I wonder if they were asked by NBC if NBC could put, you know, noise under it like they did for the other sports they covered. I know it's fake, bro. If I see empty seats and I hear and I hear an, an arena yeah, well, screaming, that, I know it's fake. The, <laughs> they did that for the uh, hockey, the basketball. I they've they done it. it. I, I, I disagreed with it then. I disagree with it now. Well, I'm just saying. I'm wondering if, if they went to the IOC. I haven't read anything, but it'd be interesting if they did. And I can see the IOC saying no. And again, it, for those watching it, it says uh, uh, Tokyo 2020, and of course we're in 2021. Uh, they have not changed Rain. that, and they're not going to. So, <laughs> no. but you know, so, I mean, just just to 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 get some Olympic other stuff. Uh, you know, the U.S. the U.S. women's soccer team got got demolished by Sweden three nothing in their opening yep. game. Uh, probably probably the worst. In fact, not even probably the worst game I have ever seen the U.S. women play. And I've seen a lot of games. I covered a lot of games that they have played. Terrible. I couldn't I couldn't believe how bad they were. Uh, but then they beat New Zealand six to one in their second game. So. We'll see. Maybe they can blame it on being uh, tired, the time difference. I don't know, but it's just a dreadful game against a team they're probably going to see again uh, in the medal rounds. So we'll, we'll see right, what happens right. with that. Be- uh, U- U.S. men's basketball lost to France yesterday. I, I, the U.S. men's team is terrible. I, I don't know what it is or when, Who's on how, this? when they're going to fix A lot of the best players on the planet, brother. Kevin Durant is there. Um, there's a couple of the guys from the Milwaukee Bucks just got there, Chris Middleton and uh, Drew Holiday. So, you know, there, there, there's no shortage of talent on the team. It's not like we picked a B team. They are there are top NBA players, and they're not getting it done. So, but this, but this ain't the dream team, is it? Uh, this, is, <sighs> this is the nightmare team. <laughs> Uh, anyway, okay. quickly, quickly off the quickly. Olympics, brother. I just want to get NHL to the, uh, the, draft. the NHL draft. Owen Power, a six foot six defenseman from the University of Michigan, was selected number one by the Buffalo Sabers. Um, the uh, the Islanders didn't pick until number fifty two, but got surprised me when they got a, 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 fin- a Finnish center uh, named a- Atu Rati. I have to pronounce that correctly. Uh, who was considered by many last year to be a top three selection in this draft. He had a bad season last year in, in Sweden, uh, but a lot of people a year ago thought he was a number one prospect in Europe. So Lou Lamarillo might have gotten a steal there. Um, the other hockey-related thing I want to mention, uh, Islanders left-wing Jordan Eberle was selected by the Seattle Kraken. We mentioned, we mentioned uh, that, brother. Yeah, we, we mentioned that before. But, but I did want to say the, the expansion draft as a TV show – what a circus that was! I, I just I was not a fan. ESPN they were they were throwing fish at the at the Seattle fish market. Uh, Gary Payton and, and Sean Kemp made a made appearance. Sean Kemp has gained a, a, probably 150 pounds since uh, his N, and his NBA days. He was enormous, like Billy Crystal said in, in uh, whatever that movie was. He's a planet. Right, right. So, anyway, anyway, that's it. That's it, uh, brother. That's it for another edition of From the Press Box. Here every Monday, 9 a.m. to 10 a.m. on 90.3 WHPC. This show becomes a podcast later on on wherever you get your podcasts. My name is Rob Leonard. Joining me has been, of course, my brother and award-winning sports writer, Tim Leonard. And coming up next at 10 o'clock, Big Ed Newlands with the Good Gold Show. And thanks to Sean Novak for keeping this on the air. And we'll see you next time. Take care and bye-bye.